on NHRA Today. Don Schumacher had one dilly of a homecoming in Chicago. We'll take you back to Tony and Witt's excellent adventure. Hey, why is Ron Cap so totally jazzed? Here's a little hint. It involves racing. Not too long ago, these two guys used to punch the same time clock. The professor and the student get all sentimental. And everyone's asking, how's Brandon? We've got the answer. Because NHRA Today is now. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? This is not normal. Kenny Bernstein throws it away on a red light. Hold on! Oh! That's a new national ET record. Lawson pulls the upset of the day. Last week in Joliet, it was the Paranormal Hot Rod Association pulling together an event best described as a quarter-mile exorcism. It was heavy on the hoodoo voodoo, and next year, maybe we'll call it the Route 666 Nationals. Hi, and good morning on this Sunday, June 8th, from the ESPN studios in Charlotte. I'm Bill Stevens, and this is NHRA Today. Our first item of the day concerns pro-stock power broker Greg Anderson. The sophomore quarterback of his own operation will soon be twice as troublesome to the pro-stock fraternity when he adds a second car driven by 1993 NHRA stock eliminator champ Jason Line. He's been Anderson's right-hand man in 2003. We expect to see Jason in that second Vegas General Construction Pontiac Grand Am next weekend in Columbus for, and how's this for a coincidence, the Pontiac Excitement Nationals. Comparing Greg over the first 10 races of last year versus the first 10 of this year, behold, there's hardly any comparison. Outside of his position in the top 10 this year, he's made a mockery of his 0-2 stats. Let's bring you up to date on Brandon Bernstein. Three weeks ago, he was injured in English town. Doctors are now at least open to the possibility of some surgery to repair a torn ligament in his back, which may need some surgical help to completely heal. Brandon is wearing a full back brace around the clock, and that'll come off in a couple of months, at which time doctors will know better if an operation will be needed. You know, an NHRA driver has never been on an international race of champions starting grid. But Ron Caps may be a step closer to breaking and entering into an IROC ride. After testing in Talladega earlier this year, he made another IROC ride run at Chicagoland Speedway. And that's where he spoke to Parker Johnstone. Ron Caps is only the second drag racer to find himself in a position to wheel an international race of champions car. Ron, I know a lot of the fans want to know at home, how do you make the transition between straight line racing and turning left? Well, it's kind of the same thing. You know, what we do in a funny car is, uh, you know, a lot of concentration and, and the speed is all there. You just kind of, uh, the transition was weird for me at Talladega, but growing up, racing go-karts, that kind of thing, uh, it's just a matter of listening, keeping your mouth shut, keeping your ears open. And Jay Signori and the IROC guys were great with me, along with uh, Dave Marcus and, you know, all the test drivers, Dick Trickle. So uh, I just need to keep uh, my concentration level up. Biggest challenge for you making this transition? Uh, not reaching up for the parachutes in turn three would be a good thing, but uh, no, yeah, it's just a matter of going out and not getting stupid, you know, putting a thing in the wall or anything like that and uh, keep my fingers crossed. Ron Caps hopes to find his name on the side of an IROC car in the not-too-distant future. Hey, it's the same old story, feast or famine. From never having an NHRA star in the IROC series to the possibility of having two of them on the roster, Doug Kalitta, a former USAC Sprint Car champion, also tested an IROC Firebird at Chicagoland Speedway. Both he and Caps looked right at home on the 18-degree banked oval, and Ron hot-lapped at racing speeds door-to-door -door with such notables as World of Outlaws bandito Danny Lasoski and IROC test pilots Dave Marcus and Jim Sauter. Well, up until last week, Tony Schumacher and his U.S. Army top fuel dragster were suffering some serious battle fatigue. Heading into Joliet, Tony had a meager four-round wins and a DNQ that cost him his 102 consecutive race qualifying streak. Then, Tony's dad and team owner Don Schumacher drafted Alan Johnson to take over the tuning, and suddenly, we had the mother of all victories. Tony qualified number one, ran a career best laps time, 4.50 with a 7 in the second round, and then in the far lane beat defending event and series champ Larry Dixon in the final, 4.53-321 to 4.61-321. Like I was listening to a song on the way back, brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue, and that's exactly what this was. That one's for all the troops coming back. That one's for Tom Tiernan, who last week was his birthday, and I promised him I'd go out and win for him. This one's for Tom Tiernan. Lucas, for putting on an outstanding drag race. Obviously, man, all the guys in the Army, bringing Alan Johnson on, you know, we spent our lives trying to beat up on each other, but what a great call. What a great choice by my dad. I'm telling you, you got to hand it to the whole team over there, starting from the owner down to the, the hand washer. I mean, they got they got all the stuff. They got a great crew. They just need somebody in there to turn tune the thing right. And 
That's what you get. Wins, baby. And then to have Wit go out and run, win the race too, man. We're we're loaded with friends and family here. We got every corporate person you can have from Matco Tools and Gates. Obviously, all the wonderful people at Lucas for supporting us. Two wins, and we and we put Snake's bolt cars on his trailer. I think that means as much as anything. <laughs> Numerically speaking, Tony's 2003 season can be classified as pre-Chicago and post-Chicago. Pre-Chicago, he had five first-round losses, and notice he won as many rounds last Sunday as he had won collectively in the previous nine races this year. Dixon was able to build a bigger lead over the number two driver in the points, Doug Kalitta, when the Mac Tools driver played 1 2 3 red light and lost with an 067 jump start. Remember, there's no Christmas tree in the IROC series. In the Power 8 points, Dixon has 230 points worth of daylight between himself and Kalitta. Tony Schumacher climbed from 10th to 8th with his Joliet win. Tony's teammate Whit Bazemore gave Don Schumacher something he's never had before the need for extra prints of his victory snapshots. That's Witt in the far lane, teeing off on Tommy Johnson Jr. with a 9-100s advantage on the tree and winning his second race are the last three straight finals on a hole shot. You know, um, it's, uh, before I came here, I thought I was a good driver, honestly, and uh, they hired me, so apparently they thought the same thing, and it's been, um, this year's been good, but it, it's been a tough three years here. It really has. We, we battled uh, two years ago, and, uh, you know, fought the car first, then I got messed up in the head, and it just uh, spiraled downwards, but uh, a great team, and Beard, and the guys, they believed in me. A hole shot is when a driver wins a race solely based on his reaction time. Drivers love to win on hole shots and hate to lose on them. Last year, Witt wound up at the hairy end of the lollipop four times, but this year has avoided that indignity after ten events. A points leader, Tony Pettergon, was rubbed out by TJ in the second round. That's Tony Farside hazing the tires and losing in the quarterfinals for the first time since Gainesville. TJ gassed Tony's teammate, Gary Densham, in the semis. And Witt trimmed about 60 points from Tony's points lead with his Joliet win. The simple truth, right now, Pedregon and Bazemore have the pool to themselves for the 2003 championship. Well, after this quick break, Angel Savoie brings her own particular spin to the term, bounce back. While Greg Anderson hopes he still has a receipt for that bump starter drive that went on the fritz. We'll explain just ahead on NHRA Today. But you've never seen it done like this. It's extreme everyday driving. See, stop and go driving. Bumper to bumper bedlam. Look at the horn. It's gridlock, baby. Wrap up the engine with a death defying uphill horn. This may not look extreme to you, but it is to your engine. Fram Tough Guard oil filters, tough enough to handle the extremes of everyday driving. Fram, do you drive tough? It's going to be awesome. Champion, engineered for maximum performance. Champion powers all. Bill Tendetsky, mechanic, driver, crew chief, relies on himself and his craftsman tools. Bill may never take a checkered flag at Indianapolis or a victory lap at Darlington, but his tools have. Craftsman Tools, available at Sears. Buy Craftsman Tools for your chance to fly around the track in a base vehicle and in the Goodyear blimp. See participating Sears stores for details. Offer ends June 15th. We got hoops! The Nets manhandled the Spurs early in game two. Then Jason Kidd took charge and they pulled out a victory in the final seconds. Now the series shifts to Jersey for game three. Plus Jewel at halftime tonight on ABC and Sports Center after the game. We got hoops! NHRA Today, brought to you by Fram Tough Guard Oil Filters. Do you drive tough? By Motel 6. For a clean, comfortable room at the lowest rate of any national chain, call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6, and we'll leave the light on for you. And by Lucas Oil. It works. Just backstage, John Kernan is rehearsing feverishly for this morning's RPM Today, which follows us at 11.30 Eastern. He'll have the line score on Al Unser Jr.'s win at the IRL race in Texas last night. Late news from Pocono, where the NASCAR tours hold up this weekend. RPM Today in about 20 minutes on ESPN2. 
Well, we just checked our email, and right there in front of us was a question for this week's Fran Pitt report from Justin in Kansas. He noticed that Gary Densham's team added motor oil to the engine after they warmed up. Justin asks why. Jimmy Prock is Gary Densham's tuner, so he knew what happened, and he explains why. Uh, Justin, the answer to your question, of uh, why do we uh, add oil to the engine after we warm it up? Well, after we warm up the engine in the pits, the nitro contaminates the oil. So before we go and uh, make the run, we always, uh, the procedure is we drain the oil out of the engine and the dry sump tank here. In the engine, we add three quarts to the uh, oil pan and 16 quarts in this tank here, the dry sump tank. So we always change the oil for fresh oil. It's on the run. Steve from Maryland sends this question that stumped everyone on our crew. He wants to know why, when a fuel car loses traction, there are no automatic reset functions for the timing devices that control the fuel and clutch systems. And I see Jimbo Ermolovich with Dale Creasy Jr.'s Funny Car team raising his hand. All right, thanks, Steve, for your question. Most of these cars out here, you're correct. They don't, they don't reset when you pedal them. Some cars do. The big reason why they won't recover whenever they step back on the gas is, is the guy's probably waited too long to pedal the car and it's got the momentum of the tire up too far and when he let off of the gas, it won't reset. It won't grab back a hold of the track. So there when he hits it again, it's still spinning. It's, it's like being on an icy parking lot and you know you lose traction and you hit the gas, let off the gas and then hit it again and it's still spinning. It's because you didn't allow it to regain traction first. All right, the rest of you know the program. Email us with your question to nhra at ESPN.com. We may use it on a future NHRA Today. If your email has a virus, you probably won't. Last week in Joliet, Greg Anderson had the car to beat in pro stock, but in the semifinals, the car beat itself to death. The crummy starter blew its whistle just as Greg was about to race Jeg Coughlin Jr., and Anderson was totally bombed. Broke the starter drive gear. <laughs> Five dollar part, you know, what are you going to do? It's just, uh, I guess it wasn't my day. So it was Kurt Johnson near lane facing Jeggy in the finale, just as he did earlier this year in Gainesville. Same result, too. KJ helps his dad Warren overcome his grief from not qualifying, wins his fourth race of 03, 679-203 to 683-201. Kurt regains the points lead by a pair over Anderson, while WJ drops 10 rounds back in third. Jeggy's still winless this year and needs to make up 16 rounds of racing to catch Kurt. Well, Greg Anderson served as crew chief for Warren Johnson for more than a decade, and the relationship was mutually beneficial. Warren won most of his championships with Greg's help, and Greg may now win one of his own thanks to what he learned from his Jedi Master. How did I get to this point? I don't know, I guess I can shoot back in time five years and think about, you know, working at Warren Johnson's and, and looking around and seeing all the, the facility and the knowledge that was there, and I used to think to myself, how do these people really think they can come out and race and compete? and beat Warren Johnson. It's just they don't understand what's really here. They're just not going to be able to do it. And now we fast forward five years, and I am doing it. And, and that's probably a main reason why, because I learned the right way to do it there. He was basically hired to drive the truck initially and work on the race cars. But he picked up uh, what it takes to make the car more competitive on a run-to-run -run basis uh, relatively quickly. And that's why he uh, just moved into the, it was almost like a natural progression for him to move into the crew chief. People can say what they want. He's a tough man to work for. He's this, he's that. But I really always got along real well with him, uh, probably because I had a, a good work ethic. And that came back from, you know, years ago with my father. My father brought me up that way. And I've just always been that way. And so I fit in real well down there. Well, it makes us feel good from the standpoint that we gave him uh, at least the raw tools to work with uh, to be competitive. And uh, when you look at it, uh, from our perspective, sure, we'd uh, like to be ahead of him at points, and I'm sure it's going to go back and forth, but at the same time, uh, he has basically the same work ethic that we have. I wouldn't ask somebody to do, to do something on these race cars that I couldn't do personally, and that way I know the way I, I want it done. Not that it's necessarily absolutely the correct way, but at least I know I can ex expect a certain result by having something done in a certain fashion, and so I've always led pretty much by example. You know, I learned a ton from the guy, and, I, and I'm very fortunate that I went through that college because I don't think I'd be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for that. Greg Anderson has the quickest and fastest car in pro stock history. Warren Johnson was the first at 200 miles per hour. Kurt was the first in the sixes, and Anderson was the first in the 660s. We're connecting the dots, aren't we? 
Coming up on NHI Today, Marty Reed and Mike Dunn do their best to explain how Tony Schumacher did what he did last week. And you'll meet Tom Martino's talented teenage daughter, who, unlike her dad, likes to skate all over the place. We're on hold for a minute. As your power steering pump ages, seal leaks may occur, causing the power steering system to lose fluid. Your power steering system may also develop an annoying squeal, and the steering may become more difficult to handle. By using Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak, you will stop the seal leaks, reduce slack in rack and pinions, eliminate the squeals and hard spots in your power steering system. It is guaranteed to stop seal leaks or your money back. Lucas Power Steering Stop Leak. It works. You do it every day, but you've never seen it done like this. It's extreme everyday driving. See, stop and go driving. Bumper to bumper bedlock. We got a horn. It's dreadlock, baby. Wrap up the action with a death and blind this may not look extreme to you, but it is to your engine. Fram Tough Guard oil filters, tough enough to handle the extremes of everyday driving. Fram, do you drive tough? It's gonna be awesome! The U.S. Open, win it and forever walk with the greats. Now, Tiger Woods attempts to capture his third U.S. Open as our national championship returns to ESPN. The U.S. Open, coverage begins Thursday at 11 Eastern on ESPN. More pink, less bling. The top eight teams in college baseball head to Omaha for a shot at the national championship. The 2003 College World Series begins Friday at 2 and continues at 7 on ESPN2. Comcast recognizes the importance of living longer, healthier lives. Smart living. Try on these suggestions. Fact. Many Americans suffer from a lack of self-esteem. At ESPN, we encourage healthy attitudes by participating in team sports. They encourage interaction with others while providing positive feedback. They provide discipline and encourage inner strength. Look within your neighborhood on how to get involved. Smart living. Try it on. Brought to you locally by Heck Trailers, 2075 Route 9, Toms River, New Jersey. Thinking about getting a high-definition TV? Comcast Digital Cable is the easy way to get the most out of HDTV. Now available on Comcast High Definition Television, see every bump on the ball, every bead of sweat, catch every detail of the NBA Finals in HD on ABC. You just can't get that through a dish. So get ready to experience all the excitement and intensity of the NBA Finals as you've never seen it before. All in the wider high-definition format on Comcast Digital Cable. Next weekend, we'll be hogging the network with coverage of the 39th Pontiac Excitement Nationals from National Trail Raceway in Columbus, Ohio. Qualifying comes your way Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, it's NHRA Today, and then at 4 p.m. Eastern, it's three hours of finals coverage, all on ESPN2. Here this week's sealed power shots, a living, breathing microorganism of last week's bewildering action in Joliet. Wait a minute, what is this? Five dollar part, you know what are you gonna do? Here's a quick peek at the Pro Stock Bike Points, which got flip-flopped around a bit last week at Route 66 Raceway. Marty Reed and Mike Dunn now try to make some sense of several puzzling phenomena we all witnessed a week ago. Bill, the Lucas Oil Route 66 Nationals will probably be remembered as a turnaround race for three specific teams. Tony Schumacher and the Ronda and John Smith in top fuel and Angel Savoie in Pro Stock Bike. Yeah, Angel, what a turnaround. I mean, she's coming off two first-round losses coming into this event. Then with the crosswind and qualifying, she hits the wall and then bounces back, keeps her cool all day long, didn't have great lights, but she kept her composure because, remember, it's very easy to red light in Pro Stock Bike. She didn't do that. The bike made a lot of power. She made a lot of great runs and was able to capture a win. That is the reason why she's a defending champion. And back in charge of the points, even if it's just by a little bit. Now let's talk about the other division in top fuel. Let's uh, zero in first on Tony Schumacher. Man, what a change. I mean, this guy was nowhere to be found. Five first round losses, a DNQ just two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, what a turnaround by this team. Well, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, they come in here, Alan Johnson makes his first run, runs a 460, gets his baseline. Then after that, I mean, it's low 450s every run. They get number one qualifier, low ET of the event win the race, 
And the run of the, of the day to me was in the final round in that right-hand lane. Nobody wanted to take it. A lot of cars were spinning the tires. And he goes out there and runs a 453 in it and just laid down the number. And I think it was just a totally, just a great, great win for that entire team. And Lance Larson came over as a consultant after being let go by Dean Scusa to help uh, Rhonda Hartman-Smith and John Smith. John gets up in the semifinals. Yeah, both cars ran very well. I mean, Rhonda ran a career best 456, the quickest run by a female ever. And I talked with Lance before the event, and he looked at everything over, said he was just on a two-race deal as a consultant. He said, you know, Virgil Hartman and this team have a very good tune-up. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing. He felt that where he could possibly benefit the team was trying to get that consistency. And I have to agree with him. I mean, if they can get that consistency, they obviously run some good numbers. We saw John run 455, run to 456. Good early numbers. They have to be able to do it, you know, run after run. And I think Lance Larson, a guy like him, can definitely be an asset to that team. Well, the one thing that we may see as a result of this, Bill, is some other teams who are struggling. They might be looking to see some changes down the road quicker than later. Thanks, guys. You know, people are what make NHRA Powerade Drag Racing such a renewable energy source of great stories. Parker Johnstone chased down Ryan Kono, a crew member for Ron Caps, to get him to tell us his story. We often talk about the modifications and innovations to funny car bodywork. And for 29-year-old crewman Ryan Kono, he too has had some bodywork modifications. He works for Ron Caps' funny car team, born and raised in Hawaii, now living in Indy with the rest of the team. And Ryan, as we look at these photos from the past, you've lost some serious weight, obviously spending some time in the wind tunnel. How much weight did you lose? I've lost a total of 60 pounds. And how were you able to accomplish that? Was that because of the Atkins diet, the zone diet? Uh, actually, it was a lot of different combinations, but the first thing I did was uh, eliminate dinner completely. Anything after 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I wouldn't eat. And what was your motivation for losing this weight? Uh, the main motivation was to get behind the wheel and drive a dragster or a funny car. And for Ryan, just like many other crewmen here in the NHRA, his ultimate dream is to get behind the wheel of a fuel car. Well, Tom Martino is a pro stock veteran from Farmingdale, New Jersey, who's managed to pursue his racing career while raising a great family side by side with his wife, Robin. Their daughter, Jessica, competes in a sport that's about as far removed from drag racing as a sport can be, figure skating. And the Martino family, it's all about fire and ice. There's no better thrill than know that all those people are only watching myself in the car in the other lane. And it's just a, it's just a huge ego boost for you to know that people are watching, you know, watching how well you do. When you step on the ice, it's the uh, most awesome, like, sound you could ever hear. Like, everybody's clapping for you and cheering for you as if you were just, like, won a million dollars. I, like, sort of, like, hold on to the seat because I want them to, like, win and go really fast because I know exactly that feeling. Watching her from when she first started till now, I, can, I get chills. When she goes out there to skate, I gotta hold everything in just not to, not to let tears come in my eyes, just so the other parents don't think I'm uh, a little, little wacky. 5 a.m. practices and late night study sessions are all in a day's work for Jessica Martino, the 14 year old daughter of pro stock driver Tom Martino, who hopes that one day she'll be performing in front of Olympic judges. You don't have to look far to see where she gets her competitiveness. I'm very competitive, just like my father. Uh, I get kind of disappointed when I don't do good, when I could have done better. So I definitely take that from him. She's definitely Tom Jr. when she loses. Neither of us take losing very well. The good thing about that is we're both good sports. We're not sore losers, we're just terrible losers. Figure skating is a sport where grace and style play a huge role. So there's no comparison to drag racing, right? But when it comes down to the racing, the figure skating and the racing are a lot alike. It's She's going out there competing against between eight and 10 other girls. I'm going out there competing against 15 other drivers. So it, it, it's, a, it's the same deal. Figure skating, like you can see from the Olympics this year, it's in the moment and so is in racing. You could have something go wrong when you're on the track and it's too late, like you can't change it. And in skating, it's just the best skater at that time. In racing, it's the best racer in that moment. Jessica's coach, Bobby Beauchamp, is confident that Jessica can take her skating to the next level. But even if that doesn't happen, Tom is a proud father. You know, I don't know if her skating will go anywhere. Uh, and even if it doesn't, just the fact that what it's instilled in her will, will make her succeed in life, whether it's a, a housewife or 
business businesswoman, whatever she decides to do, if she attacks it the same way, she'll be more successful than I am. Ultimate goal for everybody, they all everybody wants to go to the Olympics, but like my I, I like the more performing part of it more, so to be like an ice show or like Disney on ice for me, that would be so awesome. <laughs> Jessica is hopeful of qualifying for the U.S. championships in the near future, and we wish her luck. As we go to break this NHRA nugget, Tom met his wife Robin at a drag race when she was racing her own Chevy Camaro while teamed with Tom Kling, who later became Martino's crew chief. First time Robin met her future husband, let's just say there was no love connection. Hey, race fans, want to see the fastest way to save at Motel 6? Click six web bargains, special discounts you can only get when you book online. You'll save in record time. We'll leave the light on for you and a core hotel. Hi, race fans, Tom Bodette. Click six web bargains at motel6.com make the lowest prices of any national chain even lower so you can be supercharged and undercharged. Pretty cool. We'll leave the light on for you and a core hotel. Champion, engineered for maximum performance. Champion powers all. Muscle. Like power. Like speed. Want to go really fast, fast? Then learn from the pros at Hot Rod U. Hot Rod U offers specialty training for high-performance automotive technicians. Brought to you by the one and only Hot Rod Magazine. Call 1-800-884-4262 to enroll in Hot Rod U. Only available at Universal Technical Institute. Hey, Tiger. Yo, Stu. How you doing? Good. We still have lunch? Uh, yeah. What do you say? Meet me in the lobby at 12.30? Perfect. Done. See you there. Bye, man. driving conditions you face every day get Fram Tough Guard oil filters. Fram, do you drive tough? By Sealed Power. And by Lucas Oil. It works. NHR Today is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And John Kernan has corked up his bat and is ready for this morning's hard-hitting edition of RPM Today from our Bristol, Connecticut studios. RPM Today, just ahead. Well, this week's Sportsman Spotlight shines on US-19 Dragway, a one-eighth mile facility in Albany, Georgia that plays host to a busy schedule of hardcore bracket racing and specialty events that have been attended and enjoyed by a generation of racers and fans. I started coming racing up here in 73. It's been about 30 years. We've really enjoyed this, and uh, it's just like home to me. I grew up up here, to tell you the truth. We've got a 69 Chevy here with Nova with a small block Chevrolet engine, and I, I, most people have gone to dragsters, but I just love a door car. I just, to me, drag racing's all about a real clean-looking, full-bodied car, and uh, this, I've had this car for probably 20 years, and I, you know, it's just been a real good car to me, and uh, just enjoy it. It's a uh, 69 Camaro Super Sport car. Uh, it's got a 434 small block in it. Um, it's all fuel injection. That's the unique thing about this car. Uh, everything on it's fuel injection. So uh, uh, real consistent, hooks up real well, and uh, runs the numbers. And if you want to draw a big crowd at US-19 Dragway, just spool up a jet car or two and stand back. Cloven tongues of fire indeed. The engine's a Pratt & Whitney JT-12. Came out of a, a T39 Sabre liner. Uh, it's got about 6,800 horsepower, and we've run it 302 so far, shut off pretty early. Uh, here at this track, we'll probably run 220 to 230. By the way, there's a Lucas Oil Sportsman event at all four points of the compass this weekend. One at the dandy new Pacific Raceways in Seattle next week, and one each at Atco, Mid Michigan, and Bandemir the week after. And that's a wrap for this week's NHRA Today. We'll be in Columbus next week at 11 a.m. Eastern with our next show from the Pontiac Excitement Nationals. Right now, 
We toss it to John Kernan up in Bristol, Connecticut, about to cover motorsports across the board on RPM Today. Hi, John. Hi, Bill. How you doing? And we don't cheat here in racing, but good morning to everyone out there. Coming up, we're going to look back at last night's big win by a legend at Texas. Plus, we look ahead to today's NASCAR battle at the Triangle. That and more coming your way now on RPM Today. Hey, hey, hey. 